everybody. Welcome back to the Body Mass YouTube channel. I'm Virginia, one of the owners at Body Mass. And again, for those of you guys who've been following along, I have been sharing my fitness journey from being a competitive figure athlete, moving into the bikini division. Uh, for the last several months, I've been tracking along my pregnancy journey. And here I am today, six weeks postpartum, doing kind of my first official follow-up postpartum. So yesterday I had my six week OB visit where um, I went, met with my doctor and kind of um, just got the clearance to move forward with um, fitness and lots of other aspects of life. Um, so when I had the appointment, everything went really well um, and I got cleared to exercise with the caveat of making sure I take it very slowly as I transition back into fitness. So I want to use this video to um, do a couple of things. Number one, kind of explain what I did do the past six weeks to um, kind of help try to make myself feel better and heal a little bit better. So I definitely want to share those things with you. Um, I want to go over my DEXA results. So I've done my second DEXA postpartum. The last video that I did, I shared kind of my six day postpartum DEXA and my feedback on that. So uh, I did one a couple days ago, want to share that with you. And then thirdly, I want to get into what my workout today looks like, what I did, kind of why I did it, and then my game plan as I move forward. So for the last six weeks, I obviously couldn't work out the way I typically work out, which is primarily strength training and lots of walking. Um, but I did do a few things, both kind of fitness related and met with some other people that kind of helped me along the way um, to set me up to be successful now that I can get back into fitness and working out. So the first thing that I did is I tried to incorporate mobility whenever I could. Um, this, the last six weeks, is the most sedentary I've ever been probably in my entire life. Um, so I have been dealing with lots of tightness in my hips, in my back, in my shoulders. Obviously, that's not just from being sedentary. It's from being pulled forward, hunched over, holding a baby, spending... I don't know, like five hours a day breastfeeding a baby, um, being rounded and hunched forward, spending I don't even know how many hours uh, bent over changing a baby, putting diapers on a baby, um, consoling a baby that's crying. So lots of this forward pulled position. So I tried to incorporate a lot of thoracic mobility, shoulder mobility, and chest opening work. To be honest, I probably only did it for about five or 10 minutes a couple times a week. The thing that felt best for me was just laying flat on a hard ground. I would just sometimes lay down flat on the ground um, on a hard floor, and that felt really good. But that was kind of the only thing I did other than walking fitness-wise for the last six weeks. When it comes to walking, um, when I left the hospital, even when I was in the hospital, but when I left the hospital, I generally felt really good. Um, so I went for walks with the baby, pushing the stroller, taking the dogs out. Um, but one thing that did happen, and I do want to point this out because I did feel, physically I felt really good. Um, when I was about six days postpartum, so it was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, uh, I met up with a friend and went for a walk with her and just started talking to her all about the, um, the whole birth process and all of that, uh, and labor and postpartum. And as we were walking, and I felt really good, um, we, I think we ended up walking probably like a mile and a half would be my guess. Um, and I felt fine during it. But the next morning I woke up, which was one week postpartum, and I was bleeding a lot more heavily than I had been. It had kind of eased up over the last week, um, but I was bleeding a lot heavier and I had significantly more cramping to the point that it was Thanksgiving morning and Chris had to run out to CVS and grab a heating pad and... Um, we were kind of contemplating if I should call the doctor that's on call or not. Um, and it was kind of a wake up call for me that even though physically I felt good, I really, really need to slow down. I'm not, I'm not somebody who slows down very much if you guys know me, um, but I need to slow down. I need to take it a little bit easier. And Chris really helped me realize that. So I take that as a learning experience now as I move into getting back into fitness and strength training is, you know, even though I felt 
fine before. If I do push it too hard, I'm gonna pay for it later. So just making sure that I am cognizant of uh, taking it at a more paced approach. During the past six weeks, I also met with different um, wellness professionals that kind of helped me along the way. The first person who I met with that was extremely helpful was a woman named Heather at the Breastfeeding Center in downtown DC. She's a lactation specialist, um, but she helped me with um, figuring out how to get the baby to latch better. So number one, physically I felt better um, because when a baby's not latching well, if you guys have been there before, it really doesn't feel good. Um, so she helped me with that. But more importantly, it was figuring out how to get my baby in a certain position when I'm feeding her. Like I said, I spend five hours a day doing that. Um, so how I can get her in a better position when feeding her so that I physically feel better and it just kind of helps with some of that back pain. Um, I had two appointments there. I had them a few days apart and if anybody is local to the DC area or really wherever you are, I highly, highly recommend going and seeing a lactation specialist. Even if you feel like you're doing it okay, when I left the hospital, um, the lactation consultant had come in and she's like, oh yeah, yeah, you look like you know what you're doing, you're good. And then I got home and I had this total panic freak out moment because um, a lot was changing. I wasn't feeling good. I felt like the baby wasn't eating the right amount. Um, and then she went to her second follow-up pediatrician appointment and hadn't gained a ton of weight. And so it just kind of made me more nervous. Um, so I went to the lactation specialist, walked me through everything. It was a very, very good balance of the science side, but also like the humanity side of it, of understanding that I'm a new mom emotionally and I'm trying to figure it out. But she was able to explain scientifically the way... Um, things happen, the way the baby latches, the way the baby's mouth is positioned, the way her body needs to be positioned in order to eat most effectively. So again, highly recommend the Breastfeeding Center, specifically Heather in uh, downtown DC. It's on 19th and K. The second thing I did is I went and had a appointment with Carrie Pagliano, who is a pelvic floor physical therapist. You guys have heard me talk about her a whole lot. Um, <laughs> So a couple weeks postpartum, um, I had like a lot of pressure down there and I decided to look with a mirror to see what was going on. And I, I'm not an OB, I'm not a pelvic floor specialist. I don't know what stuff is supposed to or isn't supposed to look like, but I kind of had this freak out moment of um, thinking that I was suffering from prolapse and I was three weeks postpartum and it was just kind of this mental freak out that if I don't take care of this now, I'm gonna have a serious problem down the line because I'm starting to go down a bad path. So, thought I had prolapse. I uh, actually messaged one of my clients and I told her how I was feeling overall and she's about 18 months postpartum and um, she actually had an appointment scheduled in a few days with Carrie and um, when I told the, the girl I train about this, she goes, Carrie's a great PT and she has a very long wait list. So I wouldn't be able to for several weeks get an appointment with Carrie. She goes, I have an appointment with her in three days. You need to take my appointment. I'm telling her I'm canceling, I'm rescheduling. You take my appointment, you're more important. So I was able to get in very quickly with Carrie for a uh, an appointment to just kind of make sure everything was okay and see what was going on. And if I was in fact suffering from prolapse, um, so had the appointment, fortunately, three weeks postpartum, nothing was wrong. It was just, I was in the normal phases of healing, especially with someone who had second degree tears. Um, I was in the normal healing process. Carrie went through, used ultrasound to make sure my pelvic floor muscles could still engage properly. My obliques, my transverse abdominis muscles could still engage properly. And she just gave me a, cue, a few breathing cues and um, some different small exercises that I can work at at home. Um, so that was helpful to have those exercises, but it was more helpful for peace of mind, kind of like meeting with a lactation specialist. Um, it obviously helps me physically, but it really gives me a lot of peace of mind to know that I wasn't suffering from prolapse and I wasn't going to be going down um, a rabbit hole of thinking that that's what was happening. So it was super helpful to meet with her. Again, if you guys have watched my previous videos, 
I highly recommend following her on social media. She puts out some really, really good content for postpartum women getting back into fitness. The third thing I did during that time was I went and saw Dr. Shara. So same thing if you guys have been following along. She's a chiropractor in Old Town Alexandria, works a lot with uh, pregnant women and postpartum women. She also works on infants. So we had a uh, kind of a family chiropractor day. So I had an appointment, Chris had an appointment, the baby had an appointment. And um, obviously for me, it was just going to get adjusted make sure things felt all right. Um, same with Chris, uh, it was his first time seeing her. So just doing a consultation and getting a little adjustment, but bringing the baby there to make sure that um, everything was just developmentally going all right. The lactation specialist and the pediatrician both said that she has a tendency to want to turn her head to the right. Um, so just kind of making sure there weren't any drastic mu muscular imbalances. Again, kind of a peace of mind thing, but fortunately everything looks great with the baby. Um, but I would rather know earlier on if there's some things that maybe we need to work on with her from a muscular standpoint. So things look good, give us peace of mind. But again, going to see a chiropractor when I was about three weeks postpartum, um, it just felt really good for me physically, but also giving me peace of mind for the baby. And the fourth thing that I did was I went and got a massage from one of my good friends. She does massages out of her house. Um, and it just, it felt so good to be able to have an hour to just sit and relax and have time for me and have somebody just rub my back, uh, my shoulders, specifically she focused on my rhomboids and my uh, erectors and my rotator cuff and my traps and it felt phenomenal. So, um, you know, that was something that was just a nice special treat, but also, you know, Kara is one of my really good friends and I was able to kind of just catch up with her and she was able to meet the baby. So it was a really great time. So those are the four things. Well, I guess five, if you want to include the mobility that I did um, in the last six weeks. So mobility, um, I went and saw a lactation specialist. I met with Dr. Carrie Pagliano, who is the pelvic floor PT, met with Dr. Shara Posner, who is the chiropractor, and then got a massage from Kara. So that's kind of what I've been doing for um, health and self-care, that and lots of baths, uh, for the last six weeks. So before I get too much into the DEXA, I want to talk a little bit about my first workout. So I had my first workout today, and um, I'll go ahead and show you guys a clip of some of the stuff that I did. I'll show you that first, and then I'll kind of walk you through what I did and why. Okay, so it's December 30th and I'm back here at Vita working out my first time since November 17th. So I'm a little nervous. I did come in two days ago and just did like a 30 minute yoga video, but today I'm actually gonna start lifting. Um, I went yesterday to the doctor, to my OB and got cleared to exercise, but she goes, literally think about what you were doing before and do about 10% of that. So it'll be a little interesting. I'm curious to see how I feel, but here it goes. gym today. Technically, it was my second time. A few days ago, I went in and did a 30-minute just yoga video. I brought my laptop, set it up in the group exercise room, and just did a 30-minute yoga video. Um, so today was technically my first lifting workout since I got clearance yesterday from my OB. Um, it was, so my primary goal was twofold. Number one was to just move, like physically get my body to move from different positions 
to get out of this sedentary state that I feel like I've been stuck in for six weeks um, and just get my body moving through different ranges of motions, get my joints, um, you know, going through full positions. And uh, so that was my primary goal is general movement overall. My secondary goal was to just assess and see how my body feels doing certain things. This six weeks is the longest I've ever literally in my entire life taken off from working out. Um, so it was, my, my body just has never taken that much time off. So I didn't know what it would feel like. And the last time I worked out, I weighed 28 pounds more. Um, my body hormonally, physically was in a totally different state than it is now. So really my secondary goal was to kind of assess and see how certain things felt. So today I wanted to start off with a little bit of some mobility drills um, and some core activation and glute activation, incorporating a lot of what I learned with those different breathing techniques from uh, Dr. Carrie Pagliano. So I incorporated that in my warm up and a good amount of mobility um, just to kind of get, again, chest open, shoulders open, and making sure I was engaging my core. One thing I do want to point out is both from Carrie and my OB, they uh, tested me or measured for diastasis recti, and I don't have it. I have very minimal separation um, above my belly button, but nothing that's considered bad or dangerous or too much or whatever. Um, so I wanted to start to incorporate a little bit of some core engagement and core work as well, especially knowing that I don't have diastasis, that I'm not going to um, exacerbate that but keep up with my breathing and a lot of that technique work to just make sure that everything muscularly through my core gets a little bit tighter. Started off with that. And then I went into full body strength training. Again, I wanted to work in different positions and ranges of motion. The doctor yesterday, she said, think about what you were doing right before you had the baby. I worked out the day I went into labor. Um, and she goes, do 10% of that. So I tried my best. Um, my first superset that I did was a seated dumbbell shoulder press and some body weight lateral squats. Seated dumbbell shoulder press, I did three sets of 12 with 20 pound dumbbells. Um, for me, that's super light. Pre-pregnancy, I could do 12 reps with like 50s. So, so it's definitely a lot lighter for me. Um, but I got super fatigued. It just felt a lot heavier than what 20 pounds normally feels like, obviously, because I haven't worked out for six weeks. Um, lateral squats, these, from a strength standpoint, felt pretty good. But from a hip tightness standpoint, it was like I did not realize how tight my hips, especially my left hip, was. My left side of the body is where I've been having a lot of my tightness through my rotator cuff, through my traps, but also travels down through my obliques, my QL, my erectors into my hips and hip flexors and glutes. Um, so that was challenging from a mobility standpoint. So something that I wanna keep working on. So first superset was shoulder press and lateral squats, three sets of 12 shoulder presses, three sets of eight each side on my lateral squats. The second superset that I did was, was a face pull. I did three sets of 12 on these at 35 pounds. Obviously cables vary, but um, on these cables, typically I would do closer to like 70. So obviously went way lighter and felt heavier than 35 pounds normally feels. Um, but I really wanna work on strengthening through my middle traps and through my rear delts just to again, start to work on getting a little bit stronger through my posterior chain to kind of help combat a lot of this pulling forward in new mom position. So three sets of 12, 35 pounds on my face pulls. Supersetted that with just body weight reverse lunges. Um, they actually felt really good relative to um, when I was pregnant. When I was pregnant because of the really high levels of elastin, I felt very unstable and because I weighed more because I was pregnant. It just felt like there was a little bit more pressure on my joints. Um, so these actually felt really good. I just did uh, three sets of eight body weight each side on these just to kind of assess, see how I felt, but they felt really good. And then I did a third and final superset. So on this superset, I did a uh, hip thrust. There's a hip thrust booty builder machine that they have at Vita. Um, when I was pregnant, I did it without the strap across my waist. I had obviously additional weight of 
a baby in my belly. Um, so today I did it with the strap, but I did not put any additional weight on it. So maybe the machine weighs like five pounds or 10 pounds. So it was essentially body weight and actually less weight than when I was pregnant and weighed 28 pounds more. Um, so I did three sets of 12 on those. Those were deceivingly challenging at just body weight. I think my glutes will be sore tomorrow uh, from just three sets of 12 of those. And then I supersetted that. Again, wanted to work more on my posterior chain, especially the upper body to stay strong. So I just did a TRX row. Um, again, this really allowed me to focus on my breathing, making sure my core was engaging properly. Um, so the position felt great, no pain, no discomfort. And it felt generally pretty easy. Um, again, I did three sets of 12 on the TRX rows, but that felt pretty good. So based off of today's workout, um, I can kind of assess going forward with what I wanna do. Two things that I kind of threw in just for fun was I, I wanted to see if I could still do a pull-up. That was my goal during my pregnancy. But again, if you guys watched a few video ba videos back, I explained why I no longer was doing pull-ups during pregnancy. So I'm proud to say I got like two and three quarters pull-ups um, at body weight. But again, those were really hard, but I did them. And then um, I did some windmills with an 18 pound kettlebell just to work on some shoulder stability, some hip mobility, and just kind of some more functional movement in different positions and different planes of movement. And the, those made me sweat. That was really, really challenging for me. I literally just did two sets of three each side on those windmills, um, but that, that was a challenge, humbling, uh, but I liked doing that. So my goal going forward um, in the next couple of weeks is to strength train three days a week and to do three supersets minimum. If I feel good, maybe I'll add a little bit more, but right now just stick with three supersets of an upper body exercise and a lower body exercise, trying to work my full body each time. That's my goal. Again, it's a continued assessment to kind of see how I feel. But like I said, with the walk that I did six days postpartum, I pushed myself too hard too quickly. Um, so I want to make sure that I avoid that and really ease into that. So keep following along. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is at Virginia V Kinkle. You guys can follow me there. Um, I post most of my workouts that I do on there. So you guys can kind of see how it progresses over the next few weeks. So if you saw the last video, six days postpartum, I did a DEXA and I kind of broke down exactly what my body fat percentage was, pounds of fat, pounds of lean mass, and why I think those numbers are the way they are. Um, but I went a couple days ago at about six weeks postpartum to do a follow-up DEXA. So here are those results. All right, so before I break down the exact numbers, I want to kind of show you what my numbers were six days postpartum and then six weeks postpartum. Total body weight, I really don't care much about. Um, obviously, I lost a lot of weight, but if you guys can see, I lost a lot of lean mass. So I want to kind of break that down and explain a little bit as to why I think my lean mass is lower and it's important to note, if you guys look, my pounds of fat is actually down from where it was six days postpartum, but my body fat percentage is up, and that's because I lost a significant amount of lean mass in the last six weeks. All right, so here is my most recent DEXA scan. So what I want to show you guys, those of you guys who've seen the DEXA scan printout before, this is body fat percentage. So this is tracking for several years of DEXA scans, this line going up here, this was my last scan uh, pre-pregnancy. So that was back in August of 2020 and then postpartum, which was in November of 2021. So it was 14, 15 months later. Um, you can see obviously my body fat percentage went up. You guys can hardly see, but there's another little data point. So if you guys see my body fat percentage went up a little bit more from last time. Now, when you look at this chart over here, if you guys look at this black line, it's tracking pounds of fat. So obviously from my last, or my pre-pregnancy DEXA to postpartum, my pounds of fat went way up. And if you guys can see, it dropped ever so slightly from six days to six weeks postpartum. 
But if you look at this pink line, the lean mass, you see it's kind of all over the place. It was low before my last DEXA, went way up postpartum, and then it completely plummeted almost to where it was before um, at my six week postpartum DEXA. So I had a big drop in lean mass and then a slight drop in fat mass. So the way that breaks down numerically is that my uh, body fat percentage six days postpartum was 17.6%. My body fat percentage on six weeks postpartum was 18.2%. So I went up about a half a percent of body fat from six days postpartum to six weeks postpartum. My total body weight went from 154 to 146.4, but again, don't really care that much about body weight. My pounds of fat went from 26.1 to 25.6, so I lost half a pound of fat, but the reason my body fat percentage went up is my lean mass went from 121.9 when I was six days postpartum down to 115.1. So if you guys had watched my last uh, video on YouTube, I kind of explained why my lean mass was so high. Lean mass, we typically think of as muscle, but it's also all of the fluids in your body. And during pregnancy and postpartum, you have a lot more fluid in your body, especially, um, you know, for me, I was, uh, I had an epidural and so I had bags of fluids that were even constantly pumped into me. Blood volume is a lot higher. You're producing milk, your body's retaining more water, your hormones are all over the place. So it didn't surprise me that my lean mass was way up. Um, but it kind of skews things because it's not actually muscle. Um, it's not really a big change in my body composition per se. Um, it's more changes in what's happening physiologically, pregnancy and postpartum. So the reason why I think my lean mass has dropped so significantly is now six weeks postpartum, stuff has normalized a lot more. I do think that I've lost some muscle along the way having, you know, up until the, that DEXA scan that I did six days postpartum, I worked out. So basically, I'd only not worked out for a week from the time that I had my last, de uh, from the last workout I had done to that DEXA scan. It was just a week without working out. Now I'm six weeks of having not worked out. And again, for those of you guys who know me, um, it takes a lot for me to maintain and build muscle. Naturally, my body is really skinny. So, um, so that's something that's tough for my body to do. So I do think a lot of it is muscle, but obviously a big influence in that is um, fluid and how my fluids changed postpartum. So my lean mass is way down, which brings my body fat percentage up higher. Um, but it's just really intriguing to kind of see those numbers. When I look specifically DEXA to DEXA, breaking down segmentally various parts of my body, it's pretty consistent across the board. Trunk is where I lost the most lean mass but it's where you have, or I have the most lean mass anyways. Um, and again, for from a fluid perspective um, and organ perspective, that's where most of it's stored. Um, again, lean mass is organs, so your uterus, six days postpartum, my uterus is still really big. Now it's gone back to probably close to its normal size or closer to its normal size. So I'm going to continue to keep doing DEXAs along the way. It's really intriguing for me to see how my body continues to change. Um, my primary goal now that I can build strength or start to build more muscle again is going to be, um, number one, making sure I'm feeling good with my strength workouts. And then number two, really trying to build back muscle to uh, a point where I'm starting to feel strong again. I feel like my body is moving more. I'm less sedentary and it's helping combating a lot of that breastfeeding and kind of being hunched over having a new baby. So hopefully you guys have been enjoying these videos and hopefully today's video was helpful, especially if you are either a new mom that's getting back into working out, somebody who's pregnant, who's kind of trying to figure out what does postpartum look like and what might be helpful. Again, this is just from me and my experience, but hopefully there's some information that's helpful. The other thing that can be helpful is even if you're watching this and you're not pregnant, you don't have kids of your own, um, just to support people in your life who maybe are going through this journey, whether it's a spouse or a friend or a sister, um, to just 
provide them with maybe some direction or some resources or just kind of be supportive with them along the journey. Uh, so stay tuned. I'm going to keep following along as we go through. Um, but in the meantime, if you guys do enjoy these videos, please go ahead, subscribe to the Body Mass YouTube channel and like this video and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.